May I speak in the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is the end of time. It is the time of judgment. Are you going to go to heaven? Are you going to go to hell? The ones going to heaven are called sheep. The ones going to hell are goats. Are you a goat or are you a sheep? Let's find out. What have the sheep done that gets them into heaven? Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom, prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. And I was in prison, and you visited me. I don't understand, Lord. When was it that we saw you hungry and gave you drink, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? Or when was it that you saw the sick or in prison and visited you? And the answer, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. How about those going to hell? What didn't they do? You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. You would think that they would get it. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not take care of you. Just as you did it, did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment for the right, but the righteous into eternal life. According to St. Matthew, to get into heaven, to gain salvation, you have to feed the hungry, give the thirsty something to drink, you are to welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, take care of the sick, visit those in prison, offer acts of hospitality. Salvation does not depend on what you believe. Matthew does not say that you have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Matthew does not even say that you have to be a Christian. The root to salvation lies in doing the simple tasks of hospitality and kindness. I have heard churches advertise on television. If you want to hear biblical preaching, come to us. If you want the unvarnished word of God, the unvarnished word of the Bible, I'm here to tell you that this is the unvarnished word of God. The unvarnished word of God is delivered to us in that very Bible. This is biblical preaching. Come, you that are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and thirsty and a stranger and naked and in prison and sick, and you took care of me. And those, these, and the, the hard part is the last line. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. If that's the case, there's a whole lot of people headed to eternal punishment because a whole lot of people are going to hell. That, in spite of all the opportunities our world presents to us. Lord Alton of Liverpool reminds us that if you woke up this morning with more health than illness, then you are more blessed than the million individuals, men, women, and children, who will not survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, the agony of torture, or the pangs of starvation, then you are more blessed than 500 million people in the world. If you can attend church or a political meeting without fear of harassment, arrest, torture, or death, then you are more blessed than three billion individuals in the world. If you have food in the refrigerator, 
clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, then you are richer than 75% of your fellow human beings. If you have money in the bank or in your wallet, or indeed some loose change in your pocket, then you are among the top 8% of the world's wealthy. If you can read, then you are more blessed than more than 2 billion people in the world who are unable to do so. And closer to home here in America, one out of every four homeless person is a child. 22% of homeless women have been victims of domestic violence. 25% of homeless people are employed. 39% of people needing emergency food assistance have at least one working adult in their household. 62% of people needing emergency food assistance are female. 83% of families on food stamps, on SNAP, report that their food lasts less than three weeks. And here in Missouri, Missouri ranks in the top 10 nationally in food insecurity. Food insecurity is a term which identifies people who do not know where their next meal is coming from. The percentage of very low food insecurity is the highest in the United States in the state of Missouri. There are plenty of ways to feed the hungry, give the thirsty something to drink, to welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, take care of the sick, and visit those in prison. There are plenty of ways to offer hospitality and kindness. According to St. Matthew, you should punch your ticket to salvation easier than you thought. The turkey you donated for a Thanksgiving meal does the trick. That child you mentor seals the deal. The hours you volunteer in the pantry helps, as does the meal you deliver for Meals on Wheels. Many of us do not believe that salvation is as easy as this, but it just might be. Still, still there's one nagging last phrase. Just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment. Does God really condemn some to eternal punishment? This has been debated in Christian circles forever. And we could spend a lot of time on that this morning. But what I want to leave you this morning were words from the great biblical scholar, William Barclay. I believe that it is impossible to set the limits to the grace of God. I believe that not only in this world, but in any other world, there may be, the grace of God is still effective, still operative, still at work. I do not believe that the operation of the grace of God is limited to this world. I believe that the grace of God is as wide as the universe. I believe implicitly in the ultimate and complete triumph of God, the time when all things will be subject to him, and when God will be everything to everyone. For me, this has certain consequences. If one man, one person, remains outside the love of God at the end of time, it means that that one person has defeated the love of God, and that is impossible. Further, there is only one way in which we can think of the triumph of God. If God were no more than a king or a judge, then it would be possible to speak of his triumph. If his enemies were agonizing in hell or were totally and completely obliterated and wiped out. But God is not only king and God, judge. God is father. He is indeed father more than anything else. No father, no father, would be happy while they were members of his family forever in agony. No father would count it a triumph to obliterate the disobedient members of his family. The only a triumph a father can know is to have all his fa family back home. 
The only victory love can enjoy is the day when its offer of love is answered by the return of love. The only possible final triumph is a universe loved by and in love with God. Amen.